Hello on The Daily Family. Welcome back to the show. On this episode, we're talking about guilt and shame and how they may be controlling your life, even if you think they are not. Um, And this episode really comes from the fact that I posted something on my social media last week that stirred up a lot of conversation, which I love because I think when anything I post like turns into something that makes people think, um, it's a good thing. So uh, we're going to talk about it in this episode. So if you are a person who says the words, says things to the tune of, uh, it's not selfish to take care of yourself or humble and proud or humble and dimming your light are not the same thing. Like if you're one of those people, this is for you. Hey friend, welcome to On The Daily. I'm your host, Danielle McCleary, and I am a quantum business coach. I'm the host of this podcast. I'm a multi six figure entrepreneur, co founder, and president of Hype You Media and CEO of Danielle on the Daily Coaching. What I'm really interested in is helping you live a life and have a business that is a full body yes. So, through all of my education and all of my experience, I'm bringing you two episodes a week where I will guide you and give you the tools necessary to scale a massive, sustainable, and sexy business using your intuition, wealth energetics, and human design. What we can call it is business biohacking. So if you're down for that, then I say let's frickin' go. I'm so glad you're here. Before we jump into this episode, I just have to share that um, My newest container, Witchy Business, is starting July 8th. And this is a program that is kind of a hybrid of really close proximity one-on-one support and more of a mastermind type of energy where we have group calls and you'll have an accountability group and all the things. And this is really, if you struggle with branding, and I don't mean like, oh my God, I don't know what my brand is, but like you have a brand and you feel like brand like the the marketing and the the vibe and the how you post on social media and how you show up for your network like if you feel like it's a very arbitrary process that involves a lot of like checking off boxes but none of it really feels like it's home to you then witchy business is for you because the way that I teach branding to my clients the way that I do my own branding the way that I present myself in my business on social media is very much determined by my human design and astrology. And that's what I help my clients do as well. And so in this container, it's four weeks long and I am going to help you determine your brand and branding and brand message and how you should show up in the world and how you can be making more money. I'm going to help you do all of that using your human design and astrology. So again, if you have a business and branding is something that you're like, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. I don't know how I'm supposed to say it. I don't know how I'm going to, how I'm supposed to, you know, magnetize my audience. I don't know what my audience needs from me. I don't know what my coloring, like my brand color should be. I'm having a hard time with the vibe of my content. All of that's going to be determined in witchy business. And I only have like, I think probably almost two or two or three spots left. So if this is something that you want, come to my Instagram and DM me the word witch. I created a little video that just kind of shows you everything that the program is and what you're going to get. So all your questions can get answered, but comment, which I'll send you the video. And then if you still have questions, we can chat in my DMs about it. Um, We start July 8th. So it's doors are closing soon. And if you want in, I want you in there with us. I also, one thing that I get that gets brought up to me a lot is um, payment plans. And I offer a payment plan in most of my programs, but I also accept Klarna and Afterpay. So if you are just somebody who just needs your pre- your payments spread out, like although I don't op- offer that as like a direct option, I do accept Klarna. So you can always go through Klarna and separate out your payments as much as you need them to, to make it um, fit your life. But I figured I would tell you that because I've had that conversation a couple of times in the last couple of weeks about what I accept and Klarna is something that I do accept. So I hope that helps. Okay. So you may know I am freshly home from Italy and London. Uh, Breezy, my wife and I, we went to Lake Como for uh, 10 days and we saw Milan for a couple days. And then we actually flew to London for 48 hours to see Taylor Swift's Era Tour, Era's Tour, uh, which was so amazing and so incredible. And if you can, if you have an opportunity to go see that show before I think it closes in December, you definitely should because it is um, 
it's magical what happens when like 88,000 people are all in the same space and the vibration is so high. Like I'm convinced that there's a lot of speculation around Taylor Swift. Like, did she sign her life away to the devil? Like, did she, you know, did she, is she demonic? Like whatever. I, I think, I mean, what I've come to learn is that there's polarity to everything, right? There's a good, there's nothing is either all good or all bad. There's like for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So I'm definitely convinced like Taylor Swift is hundred percent a witch and she definitely uses this human design and she definitely uses astrology. It's clear in like her writing it's clear in her music. Um, and she's definitely a witch, but I, I actually think her her magic is elevating the consciousness of the planet. And it's a really, really beautiful thing to experience in real time. I was blown away by the tour and um, just everybody there, their vibration is so high and everybody is in such a positive place. It just feels really magnetic and um, really supercharging to be around. And normally like I don't do stadium tours. I don't like to go to them for that reason because it's just a lot of energy that I just, you know, protect myself against. But this was something different and it was really, really special. So like I said, whether you like Taylor Swift or not, um, you should definitely go check out her Eras tour if you get a chance. I think, like I said, I think she closes it in December. So lots of opportunities still to go check it out. But we had a great time and then we flew home and we are now back um, at home for at least the next few days before we set off on our next adventure for another 10 days. And this is just kind of life. We just, we are home and then we leave and then we're home and then we leave. And it feels really good to have the kind of life that, um, you don't need a vacation. You don't need a vacation from, you don't need to escape from. So coming home is nice. Traveling is nice. Everything's nice. Um, okay. So where do I want to go with this? So I posted something on social media um, while I was in Italy and it was about how I am not humble. <laughs> and it started off because I received a comment on one of my posts and I I don't normally like, I'll, I'll, I'm so quick to just like delete comments that don't resonate with me or just leave them and, you know, let the internet do its thing. But this one comment I was I laughed. I was like tickled by because it said, um, you said that so passive aggressive and bitchy. And it kind of like sparked this thought inside of me where I was like, you know what? I am always going to be misunderstood. My midheaven is in Leo. And if you are, have been here for a while, you know that I talk about midheaven a lot. And it's part of witchy business is helping people align their brands to their midheaven. Cause that's, that's truly the, I think the best way you can brand yourself in business because your, your midheaven is your reputation. And so I have a Leo midheaven and Leo is the shiny placement. It's the fame placement. So there's a lot of misunderstanding that comes with it because, you know, the, the Leo is ruled by the sun. And so, um, anybody with major Leo placements, there's a lot of really bright energy that comes off of us. And that is, you know, the sun is sometimes too hot to handle. And, um, so I get misunderstood a lot. Like I get called cocky a lot, bitchy, passive aggressive, whatever. And like, it doesn't phase me because obviously none of that is true, but, um, I am very confident in myself and I know exactly who I am and I know where I'm going. And that's a lot of work that I've done and part of who I just am naturally. Um, but anyway, so I received this comment and I made a whole story thing about it. And, um, this is kind of how I produce content. I like to take real life experiences, things that I'm observing, things that I've noticed, and I create content out of it. If you ever do want to create content um, in a more aligned and organic way, I do have a free guide on this, by the way. It's called the, the Thought Leader's Guide to Highly Transformative Content. And it's free. It's completely free. You can literally just DM me the word transform on Instagram and um, I'll send it to you. But it's basically a, a, like a peel back of like how I create content and I give you some prompts. But anyway, that has nothing to do with this episode. It just made me think of that. So I post these stories. And that story, these stories are very much like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's okay if people misunderstand you and actually like being misunderstood is good because people who come to my page and misunderstand me, it's, it's like they get to show themselves out and I don't ever have to give them my greatest gift, which my greatest gift is ideas. It's helping people return home to themselves. It's helping people like develop a radical, radical confidence and radical authenticity in the way that they show up in the world, the way that they show up in business, the way that they show up in their relationships, the way that they show up as parents, 
it's my greatest gift, but like not everybody needs your greatest gift. So whatever your greatest gift is, not everybody needs that. And I made these, these stories. And then, um, a friend and client of mine DMs me and says, I have mid heaven and Leo too. And everybody always like criticizes me for not being humble. And that like really set me off. Cause I was like, have you, first of all, have, have you ever looked up the definition of humble? It literally says like, in, I'm not going to say this verbatim, but it, it's like something around along the lines of to diminish one's accomplishments or efforts to make other people comfortable is essentially what it says. And like, that's insane to me. Um, the literal definition of humble means that you're like diminish, you're dimming your own light essentially to make other people comfortable. And so I posted the definition to my stories and I um, and I said, y'all, I'm a lot of things, but humble's not one of them. Like I'm not dimming myself to make other people comfortable. And in fact, I don't think it does anybody I think it, I think that's what's hurt. I think it, what's, it, it's what hurts us as a society is that everyone feels like they can't be their biggest, brightest, shiniest self. So then we've developed this like shame around it. We've developed this shame around being a very confident, outgoing person. So I made these stories and I basically ended up with saying like, be a good person, be kind, be grateful be appreciative of like everybody that comes into your world, whether it be in business or in life or whatever, but don't waste time proving that you're a good person. Don't waste time proving that you're grateful to, because if you, if you're wasting time proving it, you're doing it for the wrong people, the people committed to misunderstanding you. And that's just something I'm never going to do. And so after I posted that, there were a lot of people that had a lot to say about it. I think it struck a nerve, which makes sense because, you know, if you've lived your whole life on the, the, the platform of humility, if you've lived your whole life, like trying to prove to everybody how humble and grateful and kind you are, then somebody saying that you don't need to do that. And actually like it's hurting you is, um, it's going to trigger you. So like, I totally understand. And I, I'm glad I actually like love when I see people post things that like I disagree with because I'm like, listen, I may disagree with you completely, but if you post it in a way that's like really profound and beautiful, like I'm all for it. And that's, that's growth. Like that's, that's proof that shadow work has been done over here on my side of the internet. Cause like, I actually don't get triggered by anything anyone posts, even if I know that it's like directly responding to something that I posted, or it's like directly criticizing something that I posted. So I saw a few of these online and one of the things that I was thinking, Breezy and I were like walking through Notting Hill in London and I was, we were having this conversation and I was like, you know, here's what I'm realizing. We have so much shame and it's conditioned shame. It's programmed shame. We have so much shame around humility and so much shame around selfishness that instead of healing and releasing that shame. And I'm not even saying like we're, it's, I don't even think this is a conscious decision, by the way. Like I think for a lot of people, this is very subconscious, but um, instead of healing the shame around it and the guilt around it, we actually just try to change the definition of it. Like, it's actually really funny to me because we just try to change the definition of humble. Like I saw one post and it was like, like being humble does not mean that you dim your light. And I'm like, actually, if you look at the definition of humble, that's exactly what it means. Like actually the, the very definition of humble is diminishing and dimming your own light for to make other people comfortable. And so I agree. I don't think anybody should dim their light. And I don't think that anybody should be so ungrateful that, you know, it's like, it's like Taylor Swift's lyrics, right? Like never be so, what is it? It's like, never be so clever that you forget to be kind, never be so kind that you forget to be clever. It's very much like that. But what I've noticed is that people have so much shame around humility, right? Like being humble makes you a good person. That is what society tells us. Being humble makes you a good person. And if you're not humble, then you are a bad person. Then you are self-serving. Then you are self-obsessed. And first of all, those two things have nothing to do with one another. The, the lack of humility it has nothing to do with self-servance, self -ser self obsession. Okay, sure. I think I just made up a word, self-servant. Maybe, probably not, but maybe I did. Um, so we, th that's what we've done. We've, we've, as a society, we've been conditioned to believe that if, if you lack humility, then you are self-obsessed. And those two things actually have nothing to do with one another, actually. Um, and when we say things like it's not, you know, you're not 
being humble is not um, uh, is not dimming your light. Those are not the same things. They're, that actually is the definition of humble. And so I actually think like it's not the definition. And I've I've talked about this before when it comes to selfishness, but it's not the definition of the word humble that we need to change. It's actually just how we feel about it. It's actually just releasing the guilt and the shame we have around not being humble. That's actually what we need to do. And the same thing with selfishness. Like everyone says, like I've se- I see it all the time on social media. Like it's not selfish to take care of yourself, mama. Like it's, uh, it's usually done in like moms. Um, it's not selfish to, you know, have a business. It's not selfish to take care of yourself. It's not selfish to put yourself first. Actually, it is. Like that's actually the definition of selfish. The, the definition of selfish is like putting yourself and your needs above anyone else's. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually think that's a really good thing. And I'm really proud of the fact that I'm selfish. I'm really proud of the fact that I'm not humble because I'm not willing to change the definition of these things because I think um, you have to release the shame you have around these words. You have to release the shame around owning your selfishness. You have to release your shame around owning your lack of humility and like the fact that you're not humble. It's the guilt and the shame that everyone has that keeps us in this cycle that we like, we feel so triggered by somebody on the internet who's like, I'm not humble. Like, I don't believe in humility. I don't, and I, and I, it's not because I'm a narcissist. It's not because I'm self-servant. It's my word. I'm, I'm going to make, it's my word. It's not because I'm self-obsessed. It's not because I care about myself like way more than I care about anybody else. Like that's not it. It's truly that I am not going to dim my light to make other people comfortable because I've done that a lot. And every time I've done that, it's just kept me small. And I'm not here to be small. I'm here to be big and you're here to be big and you're here to shine bright and you're here to be your biggest, brightest, shiniest self and a big, bright, shiny object is the opposite of humble. That's the opposite of humble. So I actually think like, like owning you, the, like the fact that you're not humble is actually like the most selfless thing you can do for people. I actually think that owning selfishness is the most selfless thing you can do for the world because we've all been made and conditioned and, and we've all been, like kind of tricked into believing that being small equals being a better person. But then we have all these people who who don't live up to their potential. Like only 30% of the population lives up to its potential, actually goes after its potential in life. Only 30%. That means 70% of people I believe, are so concerned with staying humble, so concerned with staying kind, so concerned with being this like good girl or this, you know, this humble servant leader. You can be a servant leader who cares deeply about people, who cares deeply about community, who cares deeply about the successes of your clients and own the fact that you are not humble. Because it's always the people that are like, I'm so humble and I'm, you know, it's not that I I dim my light. It's not that I don't talk about my accomplishments. Like, yes, you do. You do talk about your accomplishments and it's the best thing about you. And you do shout from the rooftops how great you are. And that is the best thing about you. And you are not humble and that is okay. That is okay. It's okay for us to step out of this conditioning that humble is the only way to be a good person. That humility is the only way that we can we can be servant leaders. Like that is just not the case. It's an, it, you you being selfish is not a bad thing, and you don't have to change the definition of selfish. It's not selfish to take care of yourself. Yes, it is. That's the definition of selfishness. It's a definition. So we don't need to change the definition of these words. We have to release our guilt. We have to heal the the shame that we feel around these words, and. And I believe that this is why a lot of people stay small and why a lot of people stay stuck and why a lot of people remain in this like constant victim mentality of like, oh, I'm working on myself. I'm constantly working on myself. I'm constantly working on myself because the one thing, and we're all constantly working on ourselves. That's a given. I'm not saying you're not going to constantly work on yourself. If you stop growing and you stop evolving, you're dying. Like the opposite of growth is death. So like you're always going to do those things and- it's okay to release the guilt and the shame you have around humility, around selfishness. It's okay. 
It's actually, I think, the only way forward. I actually think it's the only way that we help the planet. It's the only way that we we move beyond this paradigm of not shining bright because we've believed for too long that if you shine bright, then somebody else has to dim. And that is not true. There is room for every single star in the sky to shine as brightly as possible. That just like there is room for every human on this planet to shine as brightly as possible, you, me, her, him, they, all of these people shining as bright as possible does not mean that anybody else has to dim. More is more. And this idea of us changing the definition of these words to placate and to to pander to our guilt is not helping us. You're not humble. You are a bright shining star. And that's a really beautiful thing. And we need more people like that who are kind and grateful and servant leaders, but don't waste their time proving that by trying to prove how humble they are. You are a good mom. You're a good father. You're a good friend. You're a good child. And you don't have to waste time proving that by proving how selfless you are. It is true that being a mom is the greatest gift and the greatest adventure I've ever been on. And being a mom is not enough for me. And if I do not put myself first and take care of my needs, then I am not a good mother. So yes, I am selfish. And that is the greatest thing I could do for my son. It's the greatest thing I could do for my clients is take care of myself first, is be selfish. The most selfless we can be in this life is very selfish with our time and energy. The most selfless thing we can be in this life is so not humble, is so big and bright and shiny. So I hope that this struck a nerve. I hope that this resonated in some way, even if it triggered you. Remember, triggers are just signs that something needs to heal deeper. Um, So if it did trigger you, then I'm going to guess that there's some guilt and some shame around some of these things. And this is the kind of work that I do with my clients all the time. Like this is, this is what we do. We, we, this is what we're doing in break the matrix right now. We're healing this like shame and guilt we have around humility, around selfishness, around money, around pride. That's what we're doing together. So you don't have to be humble to be a self, a servant leader. You don't have to be selfless to be a good mom. You don't have to dim your light to make other people feel comfortable. And I hope that resonated with you today. I will see you next week. Love you.